I hear men all the time going, I love the church. I love the church. I love the church. I love the church, church, church. I love the church. But when you look at their lives. They don't love the church. They love their ministry in the church. There's a big difference. It's a tremendous difference. How much do you love the church? I'll tell you how much you love the church. How much do you love the most difficult, non-growing believer in your congregation? That's how much you love the church. Or I'll, I'll talk to uh, like missionary uh, guys that are about to go out on the field, you know, for some different missionary organizations and stuff. And I'll start off with and, and they're good theological men. So I'll start off with, OK, what are you going to do when you get to the field? I mean, what's your plan? Well, and they're all church planners because that's what missionaries do. They evangelize, they church plan. How do you plant a church the same way you pastor one? You don't need strategies, <laughs> just need the Bible. But all of them will say the same thing. Well, I'm going to go into the country. I want to plant a church. And then from that church, I want to plant other churches. You say, well, that's. What's wrong with that? Everything. You said, I thought you were about church planting. I am. But just think for a moment what you're saying and how it can get you off very off. I'm going to plant a church. So that using this church, working through this church, I can plant another church and another church and another church. Brothers, that's not why you plant a church. You plant a church because you love those people. And you want to feed them and you want them to grow. That's why you plant a church. If you plant a church in order to use that church as a means of planting another church, guess what? In time, you're going to become embittered against your church. Why? Because most of them aren't going to cooperate with your vision. You're going to spend most of your time just trying to keep marriages together. You're going to spend so much time discipling wayward children. You're going to spend so much time with people. It's literally the same question and the same problem for the last 20 years. And you're going to become embittered and angry and everything. Why? Because they're not cooperating with your vision. You have big things planned. So why do you start a church? You start a church because you love those people. And you want to feed those people. But brothers, if you will see, here's the thing. The kingdom is so invisible. It's so unapparent that if you will, I guarantee you a man who has pastored 50 people faithfully, loving them, preaching the truth to them, rebuking them, visiting them in the hospital, encouraging them, saving them time and time again. That in the end, his life will have impacted the kingdom of heaven far more than the visionary. If I hear the word vision one more time, there's two words I can't stand. One of them's vision. The other one's radical. I don't like either one of those words. Well, where there is no vision, the people perish. That happened to be referring to the law where there are no revealed commands of God's will. The people run unrestrained it has nothing to do with your vision. Do you see, bro? I want to exalt. I want to so exalt because it's biblical to do so, the position of a pastor. But with that exaltation of that ministry to also demonstrate how fearful it is. It is a fearful thing. And I see so-called pastors throwing people into the ministry. Throwing people to the mission field, laying their hands on people as though they, you know, they fear not God. They're the same who would they're not like Uzzah trying to steady the ark. They're wanting to peer inside. And so just just look at this. You're going to be held accountable for the way you treat the bride of him who comes from Bosna. He, the one whose robe is covered in blood. And at least part of that blood's from his enemies. You're responsible for his bride. And sometimes I am so amazed on how the Lord will test me. 
And it's frightful. In that you're tired and, and all these, you know, big important speakers all want to go to dinner and you haven't had any fellowship. You've been pouring yourself out for four days in the conference and here's all your heroes going to dinner. And then all of a sudden, some little man who just came to the United States from Ghana comes up to you and goes, I really need help. Can I talk to you? And you're like, and you're making a choice right there. And it's Christ who's laying it before you. You're going to minister to me? Or are you going to go eat with the big boys? What are you going to do? Do you see? Has he done, he's done that to you, hasn't he? Every difficult person, every person who doesn't contribute to your ministry, but holds you back, every person that wastes your time. What are you going to be? What are you going to be?